the time has come, ladies and gentlemen, to end Armageddon and I guess see how the Flash fares after episode 5, of which, if you guys remember, I said with season 8 I'd be reviewing Armageddon, because why not? Um, but, you know, whether my interest maintains in this show, even though I'm a big Flash fan, I wanted to see how the, the show fares this season after the Armageddon event, which naturally feels like it's had a bit more of a rocket-propelled boost story, which I do admit is the most engaging story we've had in years, obviously, compared to, yeah, what comes after that? Is it going to be just as interesting? So I want to let you know, reviews will continue, and I really hope that the writers have some engaging material up their sleeves. And I want to say as well, I am sorry that this review is a couple of days late, just because this week's been a bit hectic for me with trying to still upload videos whilst doing other things, and Spider-Man No Way Home came out, I was late with my Hawkeye review, so... For those of you who are still watching this, I hope you uh, don't mind that, and I hope you still enjoy this video. And episode 5 of Armageddon, this episode brought some very interesting things, like a slight new take on the Reverse Flash origin story, which, you know, I I'm kind of going a bit to and thro with, and I would love your opinions on this, like, because I know my audience, even though there's a lot of Flash fans who are really, really enjoying this season and maybe don't care so much about uh, certain plot holes here and there or whatever, uh, I know there's quite a few of you who are still kind of enjoying it more this year like me, but you can't help but kind of see some of the issues. So right away, we start off more or less where we left off, right? With Barry going to see Joe. This was all nice stuff because, you know, as I, as I say, I'm a big fan of the cast of this show. And I did get that warm feeling when, you know, Grant Gustin's Barry went back to Joe and he, he had that kind of really grateful feeling that, oh, this is kind of over in a way. Like, that, that I've just been through a whole ordeal. None of you really remember, but... My god, if only you... You know, that must be very scary to know that you could have almost have been in that reverse flashpoint for good. This is when Damien Dark turns up and he he's still here for some reason or another. He doesn't know why he's here. He has a theory that it's due to the time stone that, you know, when he was wearing... Or Barry was wearing it, should I say. The portal was created that drew him to 2021 also. He hasn't faded away soon, but he suspects that he will. Uh, the only thing... I just found this a bit, like, convoluted to follow. And this could be all down to me, I admit that but like I, f I feel like this is even if the flash writers do try their best with writing sometimes even the best case scenarios it's kind of hard to follow the logic that they're going with so with Damien Dark it's like Nora still lives so did he ever even save her in the past if you know what I mean with the sacrifice that he did because then by the end of this episode He's obviously fading out and Nora's in that weird kind of in-between space between heaven or whatever the heck that was. But then I was thinking, she does say, oh, why, she says something along the lines of, why is this happening again? So that does indicate that he saved her in the past. But then I was wondering if the, if he didn't, then is she, did, is she still with Ray and things like that? Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe I'm just misunderstanding that there, which is why I'm not full out saying this was flawed or whatever. But it just came across a bit like, eh, what's going on there? But I, I either way, um, I do like this version of Dave. Damien Dark, as I said, one of the more interesting parts of last episode for me was Damien Dark. This is when we have the Reverse Flash show up in CCPD. A uh, very, very Reverse Flashy kind of Reverse Flash moments here with, with him just kind of taking the piss out of them saying, For what, officers? I haven't even done anything yet. And by the way, I just want to say it because it seems to be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. Don't get me wrong, I love the first Reverse Flash suit. Maybe I'll change my mind and be like, I, you know what, I do prefer that one. But I do kind of low-key prefer this one. I think, to me, it just reminds me more of Eobard in the comics versus the one that the CW's Flash had in the first place, or Reverse Flash, you know. He never really changed suits, but since Barry's upgraded, it, it makes sense for him to have this change. But on top of that, as I said, some people just don't really like the look of it. But I don't know, for me, it just comes a bit across a bit more comic accurate. Um, and I think that's why it wins for me uh, overall. And Tom Cavanaugh still looks badass in it. I would be dying to know what Matt Letcher looks like in it, though. Would he look better or would he just suit the old one more? I felt like this was a little bit kind of uh, pointless in a way because I suppose at the same time, I do want to play devil's advocate. Uh, Reverse Flash said he did want to do this in public. So I guess Barry the Flash from the public perspective, would have some pressure on him to save him from the public's point of view. But at the end of the day, that's never kind of followed up, if you know what I mean. In terms of when I'm uh, talking like, well, the public never, like, at the end of the episode say, so did you save him, Barry? So what I'm trying to say to you here is, if Eobard Thorne wanted to be saved, he knew exactly where to go, and that was to Star Labs. Now, again, just to re repeat myself one more time, 
yes, he wanted to do that in public so people saw that, oh, he's saying, I need you to save me, so there might be some peer pressure. But if you wanted to make that work, then you needed to show the peer pressure from the public again, saying, well, Flash, hero, did you save the reverse Flash, you know? But they didn't, so that's why it made that whole public display of requests to the Flash to save his life a bit redundant. There were a couple of funny moments, like when reverse Flash just started to Palpatine them, yeah, it cut to the, the cops just firing at him. And there was no lightning coming at them. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's little things like that which I think they could have handled better in just all transparency. But then, of course, like, when we had the ad break and it cut back to them, they were kind of hit by that. But I'm not gonna lie, I still want to maintain, and I know everyone's perspective is, is different here. Just with what Eric Wallace has done with speedster abilities, I prefer it the old way. And I know Flash and Reverse Flash have got more powerful over the years, but I'm just not a fan of using the speed force, like, willy-nilly, if you know what I mean. Like, oh... Uh, I'm going to Palpatine you, lightning, like, unlimited power style, like, I mean, at what moment does this kind of cease to not be overpowered? It's the same with Bart, Alan, Nora having, like, a whip of speed force. I don't mind, like, Bart necessarily throwing them in the shape. I can, I can be down with that, like, with Wally kind of creating that little flower out of speed force. I don't mind that so much, but now it just feels like... Where does it kind of end? Like, if you can just do that, why don't you relinquish your energy all the time mid-fight? I know a fan answer would be, maybe he can't summon that energy all the time. Okay, like, I'm fine with that, but I still would argue that the fact that you don't need to charge up Speed Force anymore, that should, that, that's, that's a bit problematic, and that you should probably bring that back. Um, I don't know if anyone agrees with me there. If you don't, I'm absolutely fine with that. You probably love this evolution and the way it kind of brings a cool power to it all. But to me, I just see more issues that it brings up than just cool outcomes, if you know what I mean. Also, when Mia Queen came in, I'm not gonna lie, all I was thinking was like, Thorn, you're a speedster. Use your speed! Use your speed! I mean, he obviously does eventually use his speed, but you get my point. Story here is interesting in the sense of, I think, obviously, if we got Green Arrow and the Canaries as a show, um, William going missing at the end of the backdoor pilot episode for Arrow would have been turned into something else completely different, rather than him being stolen with a temporal energy signature mark that led her to believe temporal signature mark or whatever means time. Um, you, you get what I'm saying now. Obviously, since that show isn't happening anymore, they the Flash writers got the opportunity to carry that along and made it. I, I'm just interested to know what that would have originally have been. So this is where things get a bit dodgy for me, and it's just like Flash logic here. I like the effort that the writers seem to go through here to try and explain it. For example, we have Barry explaining what's happening to Thorne with the fading in and fading out, because once that process is complete, he will die just like what threat Barry was under in the reverse Flashpoint. But Iris does point out and, and I'm glad that they included these lines because they're probably thinking about people like me it's like well someone's gonna ask but he still came back after that you know in season one so like th could that happen again because he was fading in season one when Eddie killed himself because that meant that he was never born so that makes sense right like he came back after that and he was literally disappearing from existence but this is where things get a bit here for me because Barry's like no this is um different because when he reset the timeline he used Damien's time stone and it eliminated all possible time variables restoring a single permanent timeline so kind of think of it like if you watched Loki a sacred timeline has been restored so the effects of season one with Eddie you know doing that to himself and then that meant Thorn was being erased that is being maintained again from season one up until now Thorn is in present day he is here he isn't hiding anywhere that would stop him from dying so he is thus fading but this is where the issue comes in for me because where Barry says it's different but it's like well, why though even with the explanation you just gave I still argue that he can do the thing that happened with reverse flash still coming back after season one of the flash and into Legends of Tomorrow. So if you remember, he managed to figure out a way to come back, and that was through, I believe it was like a time remnant, if you, if I remember correctly. So that meant that arguably, that can still be done. Even though the Time Stone reset this timeline into a sacred timeline where the repercussions of Eddie's death caught up with Eobard Thorn, and so he's disappearing, he could still do that thing in season one that, that ensured his survival into Legends, albeit he was being chased by Zoom, a, a wraith, a time wraith, um, 
or even like for example can't a future eobard with the, an explanation they gave as well at some point in time after he's erased in this episode one of the explanations they gave like in season one he was inside the negative speed force at that time in with that version of eobard in the future therefore he wasn't affected by the time blinking him out of existence because he was in like a place where it just wasn't being affected at some version of himself at some point in the future like all of that i argue still stands or like could still stand because he didn't have to go to the flash in this episode and he could have like hid out uh, somewhere where that ripple effect wouldn't catch up with him granted his life would be difficult and he'd be on the run but if he really wanted to live that bad i don't think he would go to the flash first he would come up with a way and the way the writing's trying to get across to you is that no this one's different but it's actually not thoroughly explained you just have to take it that it's different really what they have explained is that we're at where we were at at the end of season one eddie died that means thorn will cease to exist in the future because he's never born so yes this is different because of some reason but there's no absolutely no reason as to why he can't try and take the measures he did to still somehow glitch the system of time and and stay in a negative speed force or a future version of him bottom line i think he could still survive to become a living paradox again but they just don't want to do that again understandably to retread that same storyline but in universe reason i still argue that can be done now as for the whole green arrow and the canary storyline continuing with mia there was one part of me that's like oh it's nice to see like oliver's daughter she is the future green arrow but for the three quarters part of me, I'm not really invested in it. So I just didn't really, to be very candid with you and Frank, just I, I just don't really care about this part of the storyline in this episode. We had Iris ask for, you know, have you asked Felicity for help? And then Mia says something like, well, she wouldn't understand what I've had to do to get this far. So Iris is like, have you done the thing that's so far maybe that you've killed? No, 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 but I will if I have to for William. Okay, so why can't you go to Felicity then if you haven't gone that far? I have mixed feelings on the Caitlyn and Thorn scene. My, like, unironic, really enjoyment side of this episode was subjectively telling me, it's like, okay, this is kind of cool that like, we got Thorn talking to Caitlyn. It was like a good scene in of, like, it, the energy and the characters. We had Thorn taunting Caitlyn and Caitlyn kind of just being like, Thorn, screw you, man. Screw you. The only iffy thing I found about it is, like, Caitlyn says, like, oh, she won't let somebody die. And she took that oath, so she's not. But she also is also like kind of... I just feel like it's a, t a mild contradiction in where now there is a way to save him, yet she's going to let him die. So doesn't that kind of actually go against your oath if you're not wanting to help him? I do agree, though. Like, on a logical level, like, he's made his own bed. He should lie on it. So you should kind of let him blink out of existence because this is his own mess up, if you know what I mean. But, like, with regards to Caitlyn's specific words about the oath and stuff like that, yes, this technically isn't a medical issue, but the oath kind of usually stretches outside that in terms of, like, if I can save someone, I will save someone, right? Sometimes you lose a patient. Death is a part of life. So guess what? It's your turn. Because all the speed in the world can't help you outrun what's coming for you. So that line of sometimes you lose a patient, death is a part of life, that's when, like, you can't help someone. Let's say they're dying of cancer and, like, they've only got, like, a week left to live and you make them comfortable. The, the, the contradiction here is, Caitlin, you can help him. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, I, I get what they're going for, but it kind of, it's like tying a shoelace and then you just pull the string and it all kind of goes undone let's move on to the discussion with barry and thorn now this is when we get our reverse flash origin really in the flash out of eight years now this is that and i think one of my big desires was to see something like that and this is where i feel like i've got mixed opinions on this scene because let me first and foremost say that i feel like they could have overlaid flash flashback scenes right or flash forward because technically reverse flash's origin is 200 years from this moment almost more or less now right i feel like they could have done that with barry running in the future thorn even if it's really mild filming right just obscure shots of thorn like about to run out and he gets really angry that that could have easily been annotated over the scene so it's a shame that they didn't do that that's just constructive feedback of like hey you could have done this like you know i mean i'm sure you with all of this armageddon stuff you could have included a couple of like they wouldn't have had to build massive sets for it, hence the ambiguous scenes, right? It was it would be overlaid over Thorne's speech to Barry as to what made his origin and his resentment for Barry begin. I do think, in my personal opinion, not that I should need to state that because whatever I'm stating is my opinion, um, is that it, it was stupid, like his reasoning. However, the defense for that is this guy is crazy, right? Like that that that's something I can't really argue with. 
Because when he says they meet two centuries from now for the very first time because basically a situation happens and where our Barry, I guess, has to run two centuries into the future as a part of his investigation. That brings him temporarily into Thorne's time and before he runs back. But during that time, just before Barry showed up, Thorne had gathered ways to get speed. He, he in his own time, where Barry obviously isn't at in terms of unless he travels forward into the future like he does, doesn't really exist in, in a normal everyday life. So there's no speedster, I guess. I'm guessing that's what he's making it sound like because he says that he's the, his speed's faster than anyone alive. So what about the, the lines from previous episodes of The Flash where, like, he sees the future of his family, speedsters for generations to come? That, so does this undo that because Thorne's making it sound like he is the only guy and that's when Flash came along and stole his thunder? Either way, let's just brush that aside. He was about to present himself to the world, but Barry showed up. He was doing his own little investigation temporarily before he ran back, but he dazzled the crowd. He saved the crowd that he was meant to save, Thorne was meant to save. And he's just insanely angry and jealous and envious of like, why did you do that? That was meant to be my moment. And so it does make it look like a really petty ass, stupid ass reason to become a villain. But the reason why I want to kind of defend it at the same time is because I don't think that the Reverse Flash actual origin is much better because in in the cliche, tropey Reverse Flash origin, it's like he saw that he was going to become, that he was destined to become the Flash's greatest enemy. So then he just was like, oh, I'm going to become the Flash's greatest enemy. So this isn't really that much worse of like, oh, you stole my thunder, so I'm going to forever hate you the, the, the way i logically look at it is just like my friend you could have waited until barry went back to his own time uh you could have revealed yourself in another situation where you saved the city and been the hero and i get it i get it this is where it's a redundant conversation because i'll be going around in circles this guy's crazy so it doesn't really matter what i think because a crazy sociopathic psychopathic person would get triggered over something so small and as Barry literally says only a sociopath would react to something so small with that kind of rage exactly so you could say that the reverse flash is like a dumbass and like whatever right why would he do this or like he he could have been angry for sure but like then why become the villain he could have still have just been the hero um it doesn't really matter because he's crazy so i guess that is that in conclusion i just don't think it's like a very good origin story i think that's what i'd say overall even with the defense of said man being crazy i think what's cooler is the hunter zolomon story because with that kind of reverse flash story right you then have something personal that kind of motivated him to go after the flash in that version of the reverse flash's story compared to <laughs> Eobard Thorne is just like, I see myself destined to be the villain. I'm going to become the villain. Or in this version, you stole my thunder, so I'm going to, like, destroy your life. No. At least with the other story of Hunter Solomon, it's like he's motivated by something a bit personal that it rises him to that rage. That's why that one's more tasteful for me. And I, I guess I wish the Flash show... Uh, with this origin added in the admiration that Thorne mentioned he had for the Flash in the future, but maybe make something inadvertently happen to him that the Flash caused that he twists in his sociopathic way to overreact with still. I'm fine with that, but like at least make it a bit more personal where maybe something happened that the Flash caused where a loved one died or just something where like he dedicates his life to such vengeance. No matter if Barry was innocent and whatever happened. Or like in the Hunter Zolomon kind of story, like the Flash wouldn't help him get speed to kind of uh, relieve his paralysis, if you know what I mean. And so he kind of like took that personally. And and the funny thing is, though, is that as dumb as what Thorne does next is so characteristic of uh, the reverse Flash, excuse me. Uh, and where like... Even when we have Barry say, okay, 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 right, right, right. If you won't stop hating me, what happens when I do save you? What will you do? And, and I think it's because he's so confident in the Flash saving him and knowing that Barry Allen won't let him die. He's just full on like so transparent and where he says that he admits that he'll go on with his life's work. If you save me, man, I'm going to find new ways to kill you. And it's just like, dude, like I get that you're like edgy and you're in a reverse Flash, but... I wouldn't be that transparent in this moment. So I, that does make me think Thorne's a bit of an idiot. But hey-ho, it's still characteristic of him because that's how cocky he is and overconfident he is. But I still don't think the character is that smart if, he, if he's if he got to risk that. Because he does already, before this point, show some concern about them saving him. Like, 
You better do it, guys, you know? So if you're kind of even 10% apprehensive, you wouldn't risk, like, revealing that. If you save me, I'm gonna kill your family! And this is where I have issues with Joe and his lecture to Barry and Iris later on. Another kind of thing which is a bit problematic for me is this is when Despero appeared. And he went to the future to see if Armageddon was prevented. And the, the consensus is that he needs the Reverse Flash to die. Because with the Reverse Flash still living, he could still bring about Armageddon. This is where something happens which I just find, I feel like it fractures the character of Despero a little bit. So in this moment, Barry... In the heat of the argument, it's like, fine, you know, why don't you kill him or whatever? And, and Despero says, I, I would kill him myself, but it would risk him coming back as he did before. And thus, you know, if they, so what he's saying there is he wants Reverse Flash to fade out over the next hour or two, right? He would snap his neck or something, but that would, for some reason, risk him coming back like he did before. Um, so he, he Despero's motivation is he needs to fade. You need to let him die. It just needs to happen. Because otherwise, in his only motivation to prevent Armageddon, it, it just would risk Armageddon still happening. He can't risk that, right? Then, BRB, at the end of the episode, he goes to kill Thorn. In, you know, the Flame of Pytai, a massive explosion. That would have killed him, the Reverse Flash, before he would have faded out. Thus, the issue being, for me, with Despero's character... And how it gets a bit rid of a bit of his motivations. It's like, it would risk bringing about, bring about Armageddon. Now, I tweeted this and somebody replied to me. And I'm always game for this, by the way. I'm always down for this discussion. Well, he just risked it. Okay, but I think that's uncharacteristic uncharacteristic of Despero. Because the, the very nature is that he would have done that at this point we're talking about in the Star Labs hallway. I would kill him myself, but it would risk bringing him back as he did before, thus potentially bringing Armageddon. So, Despero's sole motivation is to prevent Armageddon, so the, the issue is he wouldn't risk it. He wouldn't risk just killing Thorn through the Flame of Pytar as he tempted to do at the end of the episode, because it would risk Armageddon. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, what I would do to amend this is that the plan this episode should have been for Despero just to teleport in and kidnap Thorn, to obviously just make those extra last two minutes happen so he fades out of existence. That would have been the logical approach of this character that wouldn't have assassinated a little bit of his motivations that they established in the scene we're talking about in Star Labs' hallway. You see where I'm going with this? That way, yes, it could have still been cool. They could have still done some cool stuff in the script. Barry and Iris uh, or Chester and that would have been saying like, oh, where is he? Like, we need to locate where Despero took Thorn. So then they like race over to whatever location Despero teleported. Thorn too, because the idea would be that obviously he's not going to contradict what he said earlier. I would kill him myself, but it risk him coming back before, thus creating Armageddon. He kidnaps him through his teleportation, which he's shown to be able to do, and you know waits for him to blink out of existence. But there's all this tension, and you know uh, th this rising tension of Team Flash getting to and finding where Despero is in time. And then when Barry does eventually get there, not only does he have to defeat Despero when he's found out the location, he then has to quickly drain Thorn's powers. Do you see what I mean? That's the more logical approach, but what they did do, they gave the line to Despero, the guy trying to prevent Armageddon, and didn't even want to risk killing him, and then ended up contradicting that, and then did the very thing he said he wouldn't do, whereas he could have just kidnapped him. I know I keep repeating myself, but I feel like I need to sometimes in these videos, because some people just feel like what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, but I don't see how, and this isn't a closed-minded statement of mine, I don't see how that doesn't make sense to what I just said. But, by all means, I implore people to combat that. Um, but I, yeah, I think the better alternative would be for him to not risk killing him, as he said. Teleport him away. Team Flash are panicking, like, oh my god, we need to find him. That brings tension. Still leads to boss battle. Still only two minutes left for Flash to quickly do that. Thus, what that outcome would have achieved is not contradicting Despero's very lines in the episode. But with what they did do, it did. Personally, um, I get the sanctity of life and all of that. And I guess ultimately, if we're going to be cohesive with Barry's, consistent with Barry's character, I guess he wouldn't have made the decision to let them die. But in a logical approach, a lot of people would agree. It's going to be interesting to see your comments here that they, there's nothing wrong with letting Thorn blink out of existence. There really isn't. But to be consistent with the character, I do believe that it was a mistake in a way for him to have concluded with Iris that they would let him die. And then you had the lecture from Joe. I just feel like it's a bit 
shallow of a, of a sense for Joe to be the one to just change Barry and Iris's mind. It should have really have been them if they were the characters they were. Um, but arguably, if I zoom out of the box, like from my perspective, there's absolutely nothing wrong with what they're doing. Like I found it even funny when Chester and Allegra are like, I, we know we're the new kids here, but we don't have the same history as Salon. Exactly, you don't. So shut the feck up kind of thing. It's just like, you don't look like it, this is a mistake. And by the way, long story short to when I get to the end of the episode with them keeping Thorn around, that this is a mistake. They're probably going to write it off from here on out. But with Thorn being alive without his powers, it literally is what Despero said before. It risks him coming back like he did before, but in, in an even easier way. He can, he's a genius by the way, so in a comic book kind of adaptation way, he would find a way somewhere throughout the years to come out of Iron Heights or whatever and reconnect himself to the negative speed force. It is as simple as that. Now for the reasons of the show, they might not do that and this might be the bow tied on the story, but in my head canon now, it's like Thorn is just waiting for that opportunity to escape and somehow reconnect himself to the speed force or should I say negative speed force and I feel like Team Flash are a bit silly for letting that happen regardless of the heroic consistency of sanctity of life you know it's just like no matter what way you read this it is it is a silly decision they came to I, I just feel like Joe's a bit silly for, for the way he lectured Barry and Iris you literally have the main character saying like if we don't let this happen now our family will never be safe you're right, Barry. Now that we're given what I just said and how we can reconnect in the future and all that good stuff, you won't ever be safe. You're setting yourselves up for danger. I mean, if you're okay with that, then fine. But then Joe's just like, You always have a choice! Yes, the very choice in where Eobard Thorne admits where if we save him, he will try to kill us after we save him. It will be his only goal. How about that then, Joe? Like... <laughs> Are you really that night? Like, I get what they're trying to do here, but for me, I think I read between the lines a bit too much. And you have Joe, like, coming out with all of this, and I get the face value uh, thing you're meant to take out of it. But to me, it's like, Joe, this is silly, man, and you're putting your family at risk for a guy who's made his own bed. And, uh, yeah, you know, anything that happens in the future now is kind of on you. Like, I mean, yes, it is Thorn who pulled the trigger, but, like, through this preventable measure of the lecture of Joe, it is on you, my friend. It is on you. Just to clarify my stance on what I just meant by, like, how it's on you, it's no different to how everything that's happened this season with Reverse Flash, yes, I know, to those who will say this, it is Thorn doing these actions, right? But it was on Barry that all of this Armageddon happened. Do you know why? Because at the end of season seven, this guy let him get away. Like, the thing is, guys, look, I know entertainment, this, that, and the other, right? But when you think of it objectively, without the bias of enjoying this show, you can't ignore the facts. Barry <laughs> completely rinsed the reverse flash at the end of season seven. He was standing there, could have taken him to Iron Heights, could have bested him, right? He already did. So who's this really on? Who could have prevented what the reverse flash did through apprehending him, metacuffing him, taking him to Iron Heights? Um, all of that good stuff, right? Barry Allen at the end of season seven. It's no different to that with what I meant with Joe and, and whatever happens in the future, 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 future with Thorn after his Iron Heights cut off connection from negative speed force. You, you, I, I trust you get what I'm saying there. It just makes the main character as of the end of season seven look a little, just a little bit silly for letting him go away and cause Armageddon and stealing his life through the reverse flashpoint. You get my point. You get my point. You get my point. I hope you do anyway. I don't see how you couldn't see that. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really not trying to sound condescending there. It's just like, how can you not see that Barry let Thorn go and he would only know that it would cause all these issues? Uh, I, sh I shouldn't have to explain this. But let's surf through some of the other details. Team Flash have a little bit of a debate over it. De debate. A debate over it. Um, And after Papa Joe tells them off, they're like, we can't do this. Papa Joe slapped our wrists and we can't do it. So we're going to save him. And I'm not being funny, right? Um... I'm really not being funny. This is another big issue. I may be forgetting something. And then, because it's, it's one of those moments where, like, am I forgetting something? But the plan is to cut Thorn off from the negative speed force. And I have no issue, by the way, with how quick that took Barry to, like, zzz, Because it took Jefferson so long to do that conveniently in that episode with Barry. But he has a different power set. So maybe the zzz, Palpatine uh, powers through the speed force doing it just does it much quicker. Fine with that, right? Honestly, I can see logic in that. But just because you're cutting off Eobard Thornius from the negative speed force, and with the explanation they gave earlier with how this is now like a sacred canonical timeline to the season one moment and where Eddie, Co you know, did the thing, and that meant it was blinking out Eobard, just because you cut Mr. Thorn out of the negative speed force, 
Why does that mean he doesn't get erased from time? He still ceases to exist in because of what happened. Stop asking questions. Stop asking questions. That's what they expect you to go along with. Do you see what I mean? Do, do, do you see what I mean? Just because he's cut off from the negative speed force, why does this mean he's not blinking out of existence now? They literally stated with what Barry said, like it's now one timeline, sacred timeline thing. Those events of what happened in season one, catching up with Thorn. He still isn't going to be born because of what happened with Eddie. I guess maybe that it should be fair playing devil's advocate here. I guess the reason why this he's not blinking out of existence. And hopefully they drop a line in about this. It's because we have Eddie returning, I think. That could explain as to why he's still alive and now and not being blinked out. But then again, that would also mean this introduces another issue because... With Eddie coming back, and if that is the excuse as to why he's not blinking out, even with the cut of negative speed force, well, he should have never been blinking out in the first place because Eddie is coming in. So you see what I mean? Like, it's a can of worms when you actually think about it. So this is where the big boss battle happens. Um, Honestly, like, with, with regards to putting aside that, yeah, okay, entertainment, entertainment, Um, just to be very candid here, and this is what I mean by, this is why I say brutally honest reviews this season. Um, it, it doesn't entail a bad review. It just means I'm going to be candid and frank with you without really caring about alienating the most fan of fans. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be respectful, but just call it how it is. So <laughs> he, he he teleports Barry in this moment. He's like, stand down, let Thorn die or suffer the consequences. So he teleports Barry out. And what does this show? He can teleport a speedster. So why doesn't he do that with Thorn? To obviously let him disappear for the next two minutes with my theory that they probably should have gone with in this episode which would have made a lot more sense and also not contradicted Despero's motivations with what he said to Barry. You know what I'm talking about. Now, the battle, as I was getting on to, um, I thought the CGI was honestly the worst it's been in some of the seasons. Despero's was all right, and I've maintained that all crossover. But Barry, the return of Plastic Man Barry came back. And look, 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 people might be like, yeah, but it's a limitation of the show. Okay, fine. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to call it wacky Play-Doh CGI. And that's what it was. And I just felt like they had got better with that. But for some reason here... He, it wasn't. And, and one thing that's really weird is that Despero isn't as fast as a speedster. Like, um, on the face value, he's not meant to be. But the amount of things they show in where he is, is an issue. Because they show, for example, moments where Barry and Despero are running at each other. Barry's using the speed force, but they're doing it at the same speed. Meaning Despero is just as fast. Or he might react to the Flash's moves at the Flash's pace. So he goes like that when Barry is shown to be using his speed. So it's just like... You're literally showing me, TV show, that <laughs> Despero is a speedster without actually being one, thus the kind of error here. Other silly moments where uh, uh, Despero lets out the flame of Pytar laser and Barry just blocks it like that. You're a speedster. Why not block or like move out the way? Arguably, um, with the show's logic, and this is why it's never consistent, um, he should be like that moment with the Roll Flush Gang with how like slow they were. That should be the case. He should be able to move around it. And again, just to show that how Despero technically is a speedster, uh, in between super speed running at Despero, Despero in between all of that. And again, they're showing Flash using his speed, running up to him. But in between him running towards Despero, he's shown to uh, keep lasering and rip off a car door and throw it at Barry all whilst he's running at him. What does that mean? That technically he's even faster than the Flash if he's able to pull off all those things where arguably the logic should dictate that with Barry using his speed force, he should have been boom, already there before he even put out the first laser, let alone before ripping off the car door and throwing it at him. Despero also, when this like is kind of over for a minute or two, goes back into his natural form, teleports the flash back to Star Labs. The whole time I'm just thinking instantly, run back, run back. You know where you were. Why aren't you running back? This is where the gold boots moment happens. Uh, unfortunately for me, just with the amount of issues that I just see, it's just like, okay, Barry uses his speed force to sever Thorn's connection, which I'm fine with, as I mentioned. It's a different course of lightning than what Black Lightning had to take hours to do. So this works for me. But again, I raised the why aren't you blinking out of existence still just because you're disconnected. Uh, you're, you're still a threat. Like I, I argue that Joe and all of this, it's really silly logic because now he is a threat still and more motivated than ever to kill you and endanger your family. The end scene, all of this stuff with the slow-mo walk, the little kind of wow, 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 like music. I just, mm, yeah. Joe now having the time stone, that's going to come in handy. But also I'm very nervous about that because of what that entail for logic in the future. And again, I'm not trying to come across Vulcan here. I just want good writing sometimes. And 
This is just I'm worried about that time stone being used to completely come across as a plot contrivance. After the speech and everything, we have that post end title scene where they did a shining type reference. I like that with how they zoomed in, zoomed in, zoomed in, and you saw Nora and Bart Allen there, which, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to. Like, as I said, I am like, I like Nora and Bart Allen, but hopefully the next couple of episodes in story, even though I've heard it is an interlude. Uh, I hope it's good. I really do. But anyway, everyone, long ass review again. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I trust a lot of you do. I guess some people saying like, oh, guys, this, this review is almost as long as the episode itself. I'll let you decide what that means. Just don't watch the video then, my guy. For those of you who have watched the video this far, I would love to know your thoughts on my thoughts. I am so grateful for the more engaging storyline that the showrunner and writers have come up with. It's been interesting, but I still am apprehensive about the future of this show, especially outside this crossover event. I think you can understand why I'm apprehensive given all the issues I've raised. Like this video if you did enjoy it. Do consider subscribing for more content like this with all kinds of other things. I have a Spider-Man No Way Home. Spoiler free review, by the way, up on the channel. Check out my Hawkeye review. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you fellow speedsters in the next video. Goodbye.